deadly attack in Moscow. Well, Russia has arrested 11 people, including four suspected gunmen, in connection with a shooting rampage that killed nearly 150 people in a concert hall near Moscow. The deadliest attack in Russia in over 20 years. Remember, a concert hall in Russia was attacked by gunmen on Friday and the ISIS Khorasan group has now taken responsibility for the attack. Take a look at the ramifications of this attack. What was supposed to be a pleasant weekend evening turned out to be a living nightmare for hundreds assembled at Crocus City Hall for a concert on the outskirts of Moscow. Several succumbed to indiscriminate firing by four men. Videos which have emerged of the shocking attack showed people taking cover as men armed with assault rifles fired at them. There was also a large fire that engulfed the roof of the complex. The Islamic State Khorasan has claimed responsibility for the attack. Experts suggest the attack may be a result of Putin's military intervention in the Middle East particularly in Syria. Besides being one of the most shocking terror attacks that the world has seen recently, it has also come as the latest flashpoint in already tense geopolitical landscape. The US has said that there is no initial indication that Ukraine, which is fighting an invasion by Russia, was involved in the attack. In fact, the US has gone ahead to claim that it warned Russian authorities earlier this month about an attack that could target large gatherings in Moscow. Uh, the images are just horrible um, and uh, just hard to watch and our thoughts obviously are going to be with the, the victims of this terrible, terrible shooting attack. Um, you might have also seen, hopefully you saw our state, the State Department, our embassy there, uh, put out a notice to all Americans uh, in Moscow to avoid any large gathering, concerts, obviously shopping malls, anything like that. Uh, just for their own safety. Russian authorities on their part have said that they expect the death toll to rise and that they have apprehended a few suspects in connection with the terror attacks already. The attack has been condemned by world leaders. Prime Minister Narendra Modi called it a heinous terrorist attack, adding that India stood in solidarity with the government and the people of Russian Federation in this hour of grief. On the other hand, the Kremlin said that President Vladimir Putin was monitoring developments closely. This is the worst terror attack in Moscow since twin suicide attacks in subway station killed at least 40 in 2010. With Vishal Vivek, Bureau Report, NDTV. Well, the ISIS Khorasan terrorist group has claimed responsibility, but Vladimir Putin has said that nobody involved with the attack will be spared. Take a look. We have data that suggests that they were uh, about to be moved towards the territory of Ukraine by those in Ukraine. Our military services, our emergency services, everyone is, our investigators are working on finding out the orchestrators of this terrorist attack, those who gave them transportation, who uh, created, uh, who gave them weapons, etc. All the orchestrators, all those who are responsible for this crime will inevitably uh, be res found responsible. They will pay. We will identify everyone who stands behind these terrorists and they will pay. This is a strike against Russia. And joining me on the broadcast this evening, two very special guests. I'm being joined by Mr. Rory Suchet, live from Moscow. He's a senior journalist with Russia TV. Also, Mr. Caleb Maupin, live from New York, uh, journalist with uh, Russia TV as well. Thanks very much, gentlemen, uh, for joining us. Mr. Suchet, uh, over to you first. And apologies if I've pronounced your name incorrectly. But uh, 
there must be shock in Russia, I'm sure, you know, because this is one of the deadliest attacks that Moscow has witnessed in over 20 years. What is the actual feeling there in Russia? Yeah, I think I think the word shock is a pretty fair word to use. But I also think that Russians in general are such a resilient bunch of people here that, oh, yes, there is shock. But I think more than shock, there's just horror. People are horrified by what they've seen. This is an attack on a soft target. This is deep inside Russian territory here in the Russian capital, where civilians, mothers and fathers and children went out for a nice evening to go and watch a, a, a music hall, a, a concert. And what happens? It gets breached by terrorists who then kill at least 133 people, innocent people shot dead as they were there to enjoy a, a music concert. Now, look, Russia has certainly seen terror attacks over the years. Certainly ever since Ukraine kicked off, there's been an awful lot of incidents where the Russian border has been penetrated. I mean, look at the Belgorod region, for example, right there. A lot of civilians during the Russian presidential election were simply shelled. They were targeted when they came out to just be a part of the election process. So what we are seeing here is a horrifying terror attack, mm -hmm. but you must not forget the resilience of the Russian people. They will continue to go to public places. They will continue to go to city okay. music halls and they will continue to be unafraid. Absolutely. And Mr. Maupin, you know, just sort of looking at the larger geopolitical context, this terror attack has not happened in isolation. There were several sort of incidents uh, in the run up to this absolutely uh, horrific uh, you know, terrorist attack. Of course, we've seen attacks in the past as well. The Russian embassy was attacked in Afghanistan and the U.S. has made a very significant uh, statement saying that it had warned Russia one month ago. What were the inputs that the U.S. could have received? Well, that's very interesting because a lot of people are raising questions about this March 7th travel advisory yes. issued by the U.S. State Department that specifically mentioned concert halls and possible terrorist or extremist attacks on concert hall events. Now, at this point, we have the Russian foreign ministry saying that the United States should immediately turn over whatever information they had uh, prior to this attack uh, to the Russian authorities. Uh, and we have uh, U.S. leaders admitting that they did put out uh, this travel advisory. Uh, it appears this travel advisory was linked to some foreknowledge of something like this attack possibly happening. Uh, so Russian authorities are saying they need that information as soon as possible. Um, so at, at this point, a lot of people are wondering why did American officials seem to know this attack was going to happen potentially? What information did they have? People want answers. People want answers, certainly. And uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sujit, come in on this point because, you know, while there's absolutely nothing that can justify this horrific terrorist attack, you know, innocent women, children, men losing their lives, there's no, there's no justification for this. But what perhaps could be the reasons? Because you see, many human rights groups earlier, not linked with this particular attack, but, you know, in a separate sort of uh, space, have argued that, you know, Putin's propaganda, as they describe, or oppression of Muslims, association with the Taliban. Perhaps these could be some reasons uh, that prompted the ISIS-K group, because they have taken responsibility, though they have not put out any evidence, uh, to sort of uh, execute this absolutely horrific terrorist attack. Who are the puppet masters of ISIS? Who owns ISIS? That's something that you should give serious, serious thought to. Think about Victoria Newland. Uh, she's, uh, she's the outgoing deputy undersecretary of foreign affairs. Victoria Newland said one month ago, one month ago, mind you, she said Putin has some nasty surprises coming his way. Mm. Victoria Newland is also the Maidan midwife, if you remember, one of the key artic architects of the Maidan coup in Kiev in 2014. She was also the one that said F the EU. Now, she said regarding Nord Stream, she said, we have our ways of stopping Nord Stream. We have our ways to stop that. And here we are now with, with, with the Maidan midwife essentially casting blame at Russia. Uh, you know, Kiev says that Russia attacked itself, much like Victoria Nuland said that Russia attacked its own Nord Stream pipelines. And, and frankly, when Washington came out so quickly in the wake of this terrorist attack and so quickly said it's ISIS or ISIS-K uh, and, and it's not Ukraine, they came out so quickly saying Ukraine's in the clear, then tell me why is it that the Russian president Vladimir Putin has described the culprits fleeing to the Ukrainian border? 
Vladimir Putin said there was a setup on the border so that Ukraine could help the culprits leave Russia and get into Ukraine. So yes, who's just, behind you know, this? But who, also, but also who owns... Sorry, Kara, yes, Absolutely. please, carry and, on. You know, just looking at what the U.S. has said also, because the U.S. has said that we had warned Russia earlier. Would you also look at some sort of an intelligence failure on the part of the Putin administration? Well, the question is, as far as I understand, sir, I've seen FSB reports where they said that Washington did contact Moscow to warn of an imminent attack, but gave no details whatsoever. So mm -hmm. as I understand, it was a phone call from D.C. to Moscow saying, look out, guys, there's an imminent terror attack. That's all we got. Click. Okay. No details, nothing like that. I would imagine, I would imagine that if Washington knew enough to come out with a warning, they also knew some of the details as well. That's an important point. And Mr. Maupin, would you like to respond to that? Because, you know, now the U.S. has come out and said that, well, we had warned Russia. But what, as Mr. Suchit points out, there was no uh, sort of, there were no details that were conveyed to the Putin administration or Russia about uh, what perhaps await, uh, what, what awaited Russia. Absolutely. Um, and if the U.S. government had information about a planned attack, they should have provided details about it. Uh, they should have done everything in their power to enable Russian authorities uh, to prevent this attack from occurring. Let's not you know, forget that ISIS is not only an enemy of Russia, it's also an enemy of the United States. And the United States government has said that its mission is to wipe out ISIS. But mm -hmm. there are some things that just don't seem to add up. You know, you mentioned uh, a a notion of oppression of Muslims. We just had a, an election. There was just an election in Russia, and the Muslims of Russia overwhelmingly voted for the Russian president. But uh, Mr. Russian Maupin, president many would call it it was hardly election. Many would say it was hardly an election, and it was perhaps, as many across the world say, that it was a sham. That you know, it was a foregone conclusion that well, Mr. I was Putin an would be observer, voted by. And I saw the polling places. I visited the civic chamber where every polling station was monitored uh, 24 hours a day with cameras. Uh, the Russian public had three days to vote. There okay. were observers watching the counting. I, as an election observer from the United States, can uh, can verify that that was a fair election, and that in the context of the Ukrainian conflict, the public, uh, the population of Russia, rallied around the president uh, okay. to make clear that they were not going to submit to efforts uh, by the United States and others to undermine their country, and that it was a right. very much a patriotic vote. It was a rally round the flag moment, uh, and Muslims were among the biggest supporters of Russian President. So Putin. Now, Putin has so been of course, a while you say that it was a free and fair election, there are some concerns over that across the world. But let's come back to the topic, and I'll give you 30 seconds each, gentlemen, uh, beginning with you, Mr. Maupin, on the geopolitical environment that we find ourselves in. You have two massive wars raging. Uh, perhaps the world has lost interest in the Russia-Ukraine war, but it's still killing people. Uh, do you think it's a failure of diplomacy on the part of world leaders that, you know, such attacks, such terrorist attacks, such mass shootings continue? Well, I'll put it this way. One of the great strengths of cooperation between Russia and the United States uh, when relations were better was in relation to stopping, you know, Wahhabi extremists uh, like ISIS. The, the Russian government has had to deal with these forces for a long time and the United States, you know, we've had 9-11, we've had other terrorist attacks. And one of the strengths uh, when Russia and the United States were getting along better was that they cooperated to prevent these kind of things. Right. And if relations could improve, uh, perhaps there could be a situation where, again, that cooperation is restored. And I look at this and I say, you okay. know, something, you know, a relationship that existed that kept a lot of people safe doesn't seem to be intact. And right. I really am, am horrified that U.S. leaders didn't give every bit of information that they could have given to the Russian authorities to prevent this attack. That's just All a right. basic human responsibility. All right, Mr. Sujit, the last word to you. The biggest changes in 100 years. As all of us here have front row seats to that of the blossoming multipolar world, with India, of course, being a part of the BRICS family. Russia right. presiding over what is one of the biggest, if not now, the most strategically important family around the world. If you consider the multipolar world with the BRICS nations, with the ASEAN, the mm -hmm. SCO, the Global South, all of these nations are coagulating with each other to, put, to set out a new foundation for a new world order. Let me be very clear about this. A lot of people say that the American and NATO proxy war against Russia and Ukraine is actually part of a much, much bigger picture. And that okay. is the changing world. When the Chinese president just very quickly won his re-election and came to Moscow, 
President Xi said to Putin, we are witnessing the biggest changes in 100 years and we are driving those changes. The unipolar hegemon does not like this. It does not want to lose its grip on its power around the world, but it is like sand slipping through its fingers. So where are we geopolitically speaking? We are on the front line of a brand new multipolar one.